time to abuse some leather. Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Mildly Gothic. If you're new here, what I like to do is a variety of artsy things, often with a little bit of a dark twist. Today it's not quite so dark, however, it's more of a turn in the cosplay direction. I am trying to match the... ...franchise uh, that I'm <laughs> uh, inspired by today. And this is going to be part one of however many it takes me to create a costume of... I was going to do a drum roll, but I realized the title has probably already spoiled it. The Armorer from The Mandalorian. Um, I decided to start with the gloves because the gloves felt like a very reasonable place to start as far as something I could actually achieve, focus on, and get done. Next is probably going to be the skirt, and we will get to the other parts of that um, in future videos. But today I am walking you through the process basically from original Amazon purchase of a base glove to a final product. Now there is something with the base gloves. I would like to point out that this is the image that Amazon advertised, and this is the color of the gloves that I received. So I was not expecting that color difference. I think I was able to work with it quite well. So there's just a few little hiccups here and there. Um, but here's what I'm gonna be showing you, how I made, and I'm really happy with how this product turned out and I'm excited to see where this cosplay goes. So with that, let's get to it. So first things first is the leather on the hand of the glove was way too shiny. So I decided to distress it a little bit. And the way I did this is I have a spray bottle filled with uh, rubbing alcohol. And first you kind of want to just beat it. So like literally physically smack it against things, twist it, misshape it. Uh, and then you can take sandpaper or a very rough bristled brush. I was using, I believe, 220 and 140 grit sandpaper. I had two different ones to just get some of that texture in. You do want to do this in kind of stages and stop and evaluate where you are because once the leather is distressed, you cannot undistress it. So now comes the mildly annoying part, and that is the painting of the leather. The image online did not match the color of the product that I received, and so I decided I wanted to paint that arm section to better match the hand for the desired look. I mixed a black, a tan, and a red together to try to get the brown, and then used kind of focuses of the individual colors to help get some more variation in texture and really make the gloves look worn instead of fresh, clean, and shiny. So this is where the video gets a little bit jumpy because I decided not to film every single instance of the stitches. Something I knew I really wanted to get across and convey in the gloves is that crosshatch stitching. Uh, since I did not make these gloves, I knew there was no chance of me getting them on my sewing machine and I was gonna have to do these by hand. Um, this was not terrible, but it was a little difficult um, at first as far as figuring out the best way to work with it. Uh, each line took me about 20 minutes to start, but as I got more proficient, I think it took less time. I also did not pay attention to the actual shape of that part of the glove. It is not a cylinder, it is more of a trapezoid, and so mine ended up a little off, and you'll kind of see that in a little bit, but this was just a needle, some black thread, and then those little grippy things on my fingers to help me pull and push the needle through the leather. Typically with leather sewing work, you want to make the holes ahead of time, and then it's actually a lot easier for you to stitch. I didn't do that. I don't have those tools. I suffered, but we made it work. So at this point, I have all of the cross stitching done. Uh, it gets a little uneven on this side because I forgot to take into account that this is flared, which, um, you know, makes sense now, but for some reason I didn't see it when I was happy-go-lucky. The most important thing is I think this crosses, not crosses, the diamonds on this side look very good as far as I think their structure and spacing, and this being the outside of the hand, I think that's a little bit more important. And then the inside of the glove is kind of whatever. Uh, also, is anyone really gonna notice this detail? Probably not, but will I? Yes, that's why I did it. So, next bit, um, I have the other glove that I'm going to cross stitch, but I've probably already said by now, I'm only going to show the full process of one glove so I can actually get a video done. Um, I'll show the second one in part two of this costume. Um, I have another glove here. I've started painting one side of it, but I think the color is a little off. 
um, this camera seems to make all of these colors look the same. I promise you, this is more red, so I have some more leather paint. So I'm going to paint this a little bit more, and I'm going to, I still actually have to paint the other side of this as well. But this is the glove that I am going to take apart. As you can see, this has not been weathered. This is the weathered glove. This has not been weathered. So you can see really what that difference is. And I'm going to cut out this to make that uh, kind of armor looking spot on the back of her hand. So there we are. So in order to make patterning this and placing it a lot easier, it's time to turn to my old friend, the seam ripper. Uh, I just decided to seam rip off one panel. I'm doing one glove at a time. So it was pretty straightforward to seam rip it off. And then I placed it on the back of the hand and tried to use a pencil to outline over what I thought the area would be because I would rather have to trim it down than cut it too small and then have wasted that leather. And I did actually end up trimming it down, I think even more than what I show, um, and then squaring off those corners. It was a really straightforward process to get this situated because you're pretty much just following the back of the hand, but you just want to make sure the base lines up and that it reaches the point at the knuckles that you want. So the stitching here got a little wide. Um, I'm, I am going to do another thin row of stitches in between. And so where I thin, I'll probably do thicker stitches. And when I did thick, I'll probably do thinner just to kind of match that out. But um, this space is really hard to work in. So we'll see if I can actually do that. Um, anyways. To be honest, I am unsure if this is genuine leather or pleather. But regardless, when it is cut, there is that white core to it, and I thought that detracted from the overall aesthetic. So I used the same brown from the leather paint that I've mixed up earlier, and I just covered all of those exposed edges. I think it gave it a really nice, clean, finished look. So the last thing to add to this glove is the red cuff around the back, and for this I have another piece of pleather that I've already weathered and just added some black paint to it to give it a little bit more texture. So the process for how I stitched this cuff on might be a little difficult to explain, but I will do my best. So first I stitched it right sides together because something I noticed from the image is that it does appear that the cuff has like a lip over the base of the glove. And so I stitched right sides together so that when I fold it back, I can get that little puff. Um, that was easy enough. The second part of this, I might try to include a diagram of how the fabric is folded because I'm going through four pieces of leather at once. I chose not to do the seam until I had that second um, lip established, just because I thought it was going to be easier. And I put that seam on the bottom of the glove so it would be less visible if I completely screwed it up. But once I had that second seam done all the way around, I went back to the bottom seam to stitch it in place so it wasn't weirdly puffy and I got one the look of that stitching in the first place and two it was secure and sat where I wanted. So here is one full glove. We've got the red stitching that goes all the way around. Uh, this was really difficult because I had to stitch through like four layers of leather at one time so it is a little messy. I mean, the entire thing, all of this is hand-stitched, which probably would not have had to happen if I made the gloves by hand, but uh, I've never made gloves before, and these are really hard to get right, so I didn't want to deal with that. I found these that I thought were a really good base, and I'm really happy with the result. I do still want to go do another round of stitching, but as far as showing you the process of how we got here, I mean, this is the final glove. I think this is relatively accurate to her costume from images that you can find online. And I mean, I think it fits really well. It probably goes a little bit longer than her actual gloves do. Some toss ups you gotta make, it's not always going to be perfect. But I think they look worn, they look beaten in, and they definitely look pretty tough. And uh, just something to wrap this up. I'm really happy with how this glove turned out. Of course, the other one is unfinished. I do still have to do everything that I did to this one, to this guy. But I, in the end, I will have two, I think, very, as accurate as I can currently make them, gloves to her costume. Are they detailed? Yes. Are the fine details accurate? No. If I, you know, because the fine, the stitching isn't quite perfect and the colors don't quite match. But as far as my first attempt at an actual cosplay, 
this is a great first piece in my opinion. So I hope you'll stick with me and tune into the next parts as I get through uh, everything else. I may be suspending doing special effects makeups while I am working on this just so that I can focus on it. Um, but we'll see how all of that goes. Regardless, if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. And I sincerely hope you stick around for this journey. And I will see you in the next one.